Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And I'm very happy to join you today in this conference to talk about Yemen. Yemen for me is a country that I love and I visited maybe more than 20, 25 years ago uh, and even up to the last two, three years. I listened to Dr. Ishaq Sabai, Dr. Jamal al Nuri, and Brother Hashim and saw the video. Nothing changes since I visited Yemen in 2017, well, unfortunately. Let us talk about, I'm not talking about the program, which is uh, Dr. Sabai, uh, Ishraq uh, m mentioned it, but I'm talking especially for the non-Arabs who are actually uh, with us today about what is Yemen for humanity. Yemen for us is the origin of Arabs. The origin of Arabs and the shame on all of us as Arabs to see what's happening in Yemen today, especially three before the war, 14 million people from Yemen were uh, seeking urgent assistance. Now it becomes 24 million people, unfortunately. Yemen for us is the origin of Arab and has a favor on all the neighboring countries. All the neighboring countries. They help the Yemeni people helped in building the infrastructure of the neighboring countries, building the economy, building the social life, building the economic life and everything. So we should not see what's happening in Yemen nowadays is happening. Unfortunately, I call that is another immoral epidemic happening in Yemen. The pandemic of, of, of Corona is happening. I've got one pandemic of Corona. I've got one pandemic of George Floyd, which is his message going all over the place. And now Yemen is witnessed, witnessing a moral internal epidemic could become a pandemic afterwards. Not only a shame on the Arabs, which I'm an Arab, I'm talking about myself to be included, but a shame on the Muslims from the history of Yemen. And we see the Yemeni people, how they have done to humanity from the Far East in Indonesia and China to the Far West in actually America and other places, building their economy, spreading the humanitarian uh, messages of Islam, and in Africa and Asia, and even after the Second World War, how the Yemeni people managed to build the economy of Europe and America as well. So shame on us not to stand next to Yemen. Yemen, where the Prophet ﷺ said the, the, Yemen, the wisdom is from Yemen, the fiqh is from Yemen, and the Iman is from Yemen, and the Ansar from Yemen. This is my message, first of all, to everybody and anybody who does not understand who are the Yemeni and does not understand what's Yemen for all of us, unfortunately. Let us talk about practical solution, actually. I have 10 points to mention. First point is coordination, coordination, coordination between all the local organization becomes a necessity a necessity and a compelling duty on all the local organization from the level of the village to the level of the town to the level of the city and to the level of the state to coordinate, to coordinate, to coordinate between all of us then coordinate with such international organizations such as Islamic Relief, Human Appeal, Muslim Aid and others and the Nuri Foundation and others to coordinate with them. This is something we cannot go without. Number two, we have to strengthen we have to strengthen, we have to strengthen the local society organization and the local society sector. We have no other way but empowering the local organization, building them and building their capacity and enabling them to face the pandemic of Yemen or the immoral epidemic which is happening in Yemen, unfortunately, and every, quite a lot of people are silent about it. Number three, we have to innovate to innovate a new methods and new ways of fundraising. New way of fundraising with all the lawful and legal ways. And to establish the principle of networking, communication, and building partnership. Networking, communica communication, and building partnership. Number four is transparency is the cornerstone of all our work. Transparency in building and in, in raising our fund and transparency in spending our fund. Number five, not, at, not whatsoever to politicize. No politicization of humanitarian work. 
Don't link your humanitarian work to a political party, to a jama'ah, to a sect, but make it social for every and anyone in Yemen who is in dire need for the support and the help. Number six, the, you know, to have to empower the local organization and to make them the first responder and let them to and enable them build their capacity and make them to be able to deliver what we can. This will save our time, will save our money, will save our effort, and will build the local organization and local society in Yemen. Number seven, we have to involve the young people, young men and young women. They are, have got very shrewd thinking, far more better than myself and far more better than the others. They know the new technology. They know the mechanics and they are faster than us. We can guide them, but we can involve them in planning, in implementing, and in following up and in measuring the impact of what we are doing. Number eight, we have to involve the Yemeni woman. The women in Yemen are the source of wisdom. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. That's what I'm, I'm trying to say. Number nine, we have to build the bridges between us and the local governments on the level of the districts, the level of the town, the level of the cities, and the level of the state itself. Number 10, we have to build, to build, to build pressure groups. To build pressure groups from all of us. Fundraising is good, not good enough. It's good, and we need it. And I thank Dr. Jaman Nouri for the money he mentioned that he raised and will be raising in Kuwait and other countries, but pressure group to stop, to stop, to stop the war. Because the war in Yemen is on the war in the, on the people of Yemen. And I quote something which happened actually at the time of the mid-90s in Iraq. When there was an embargo about Iraq and about as a state, you know what the Iraqi people, and you know what the ministers of Iraq, Tari Aziz and the others were saying, they were saying, you are not punishing us as government. You are punishing the Iraqi people. The Iraqi people are dying because there is no proper clean water supply for them. There is no proper health care and they are destroying the infrastructure. We are as government are actually not suffering. You are making the embargo on the Iraqi people at that time. This is what's happening now. What's happening now to the Yemeni people. Unfortunately, 24 million, 24 million immoral, immoral, immoral epidemic happening in Yemen, unfortunately, under our eyes and our ears, unfortunately. What we need to do now is to come out with one side to raise the fund as much as we can for carrying on the program to alleviate what's happening there. On the second side, stop the war in Yemen. Stop the war in Yemen. Stop the war in Yemen. Nobody will come out of this war victorious. Nobody. All of us will be, are, will be losers. And the first loser in this war are the Yemeni people, the children, the women, the sick people, the elderly, the displaced people, and the all disabled people are the people who are suffering from this war, unfortunately. And we should not, we should not, while we feed, while we bring the medicine, while we fight corona, while we fight other, we should ask every and every and everyone to stop the war in Yemen. Because the war in Yemen, the war in Yemen is the war in the, on the people of Yemen. It's not the war on the government of Yemen. And it's myself, it is an immoral humanitarian crisis. Thank you very much.